So one of the questions I get asked the most often from somebody who's buying a Blackstone griddle for the first time is what accessories do I need? So I'm going to take you through the barrage of uh, accessories that we have out here and talk about which ones are necessary, which ones you need, and which ones are just kind of fun and nice to have. So let's get to it. <music> Like I said, I always get asked when somebody's buying their Blackstone, what is the accessories that I need? I just need to get started. What do I need just to get started? So let's talk a little bit about what you need to get started. So obviously you're gonna need a good set of spatulas. Uh, it's not necessary for you to buy the more expensive, nicer ones like these, but you can buy the cheaper ones and they work. In fact, when I got my Blackstone, that's what I did. I bought the cheaper ones. I got a nice little starter kit. It was fine. But I will tell you that if this is the only accessory you're going to buy for a while, invest in some good spatulas. These spatulas are a little bit heavier. They're not flimsy. They're not going to flop around. They have a bit wider of a base. It's better to spend the money on a good set of spatulas than anything else. You're going to use this tool more often than any other tool. So get a good set. Okay. The other thing that I would say is a must is going to be a good scraper. And so there's a couple different versions of scrapers out there. You've got the little handheld ones like this, and you've got a bigger one like this. Honestly, I started with this one and very quickly realized that it's a bit much. I don't really need this. It works. It's nice to have, but this isn't for everybody. You don't really need one that big. One this small would be plenty. Okay. And if you get the nicer set of spatulas, one of the nice things about them is they can act as a scraper because they are so heavy duty. So something to consider as well if you're not interested in investing in a scraper right away. But I would say getting at least a scraper about like this, nice little handheld one that you can use to scrape some residue off. I think that's a good investment. Okay, so the other thing that you're going to is kind of a must to have is probably a good set of squirt bottles. Now these are some of Blackstone's cheaper sets. I don't have their nicer sets. They have some really nice squirt bottles that'll run you about 20, 25 bucks. These I think cost me $10 for the pair, so they were pretty cheap, but they work, right? So having two is nice to have because then you have one for your oil that you use all the time, one for water so that you can use it to clean it up. Um, having more than one, or more than two could be good as well because you could use different varieties of oils and different things like that. And so it can be nice to have more than one. In fact, I have a couple of these that I keep in the fridge that have sauces in them I use all the time, like soy sauce and teriyaki and things. And then I have um, a couple of different larger ones that have different kinds of oils in them. But these two that are sitting here, I use the most often, okay? All right, the last tool that I would say is a must, is something that you really should just get right off the bat, is going to be a good basting dome, okay? Now, you don't have to get the big one. I got the big one because I thought, if I'm going to get one for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and go big. Uh, they sell smaller ones. They have a collapsible version now, uh, which is really small. They have the small round version, and then they have this real big one, um, if you're gonna if you're gonna get one, get one that suits your needs. So if you're cooking for a lot of people, you may want to get the bigger one. If you plan on cooking a lot of vegetables, these are really nice for steaming vegetables and things like that. You may want to get a bigger one. If you're just gonna be doing it to melt cheese on a smash burger, the small one will be fine. Okay. But these tools right here, the squirt bottles, scraper, good set of spatulas, and the basting dome. If you have those and nothing else, you can cook anything on this Blackstone, okay? Those are the minimum requirement to basically be able to cook any recipe you see, anything you find online. You can do it successfully with those tools. My suggestion is you start there, get those basics, and cook for a little while and just kind of get used to the Blackstone. And then as time goes on and you start to, th to discover a, a deeper need or desire for some other accessories, then you go invest in them. Okay, but don't do it right away. You don't have to go real big and buy every accessory at the store right away, as tempting as it may be. 
So the first category of uh, accessories I consider are the musts. There is another category of accessories that I think of as the they're good to have, they're useful, and you're going to just buy them as you need them. Okay, and I guarantee probably one of the first ones that you're going to buy if you're in that category is going to be a burger press because who has a Blackstone and doesn't make smash burgers? So a good burger press would be nice to have. They have a lot of different versions. Uh, you don't have to buy Blackstone's brand, although Blackstone does make some newer versions like this one that do address some specific needs that some of the other ones don't like being real thin being made out of stainless, that kind of thing. Um, but you don't need, you know, 15 burger presses. You don't need 15 different kinds of presses or even two or three. You just really need one good one. So when I started, I actually started with this one. Again, I figured if I'm going to buy one to get me by, I'm going to go big or go home. So I got the biggest one they had to offer. This one's great for smashing burgers. I could smash up to four burgers at a time with this. It's great for bacon because I can put a whole pack of bacon basically underneath this and hold the bacon down. It's very versatile. Okay. The reason I moved on and purchased this one is because this one is uh, cast iron, very similar to the top of your griddle, which means it has to be babied. It's a little harder to clean as opposed to this one, which is stainless steel, which is really nice when smashing burgers because then I could smash the burgers. It has that nice flat lip so that it gets nice and flat and it's easier to clean. So that's why I went ahead and bought the new burger kit and got this one. But again, think of what your needs are. What do you need? Do you need something real big? Are you happy with something small? Get the burger kit. Okay, that's worth doing. One of the other accessories that I think is going to be something that you get just because it's nice to have, but you don't necessarily need it, is probably going to be a good set of tongs. I actually didn't buy the Blackstone tongs right away. I used my normal grilling tongs. Nothing wrong with that. I like the Blackstone ones because it has this wider base on it. I was looking for a set of tongs that has that. And I figured why not just buy the Blackstone version. Not necessary for you to buy the Blackstone version, but they are nice for that reason. Okay. You also would be nice to have probably a good shaker that I could keep out here. I like these uh, steel shakers. I like this one in particular that come, came with the burger kit with this uh, press because it has this rubber lid. I'm going to tell you now, if you buy a shaker, get the lid on it. It makes a big difference. It keeps the moisture out, keeps things a lot cleaner. Okay. And then probably one of my favorite accessories that I didn't realize I was going to love so much was the taco stand. So when, that, when I first bought this, I kind of bought it thinking, ah, I really don't need that. It's not going to be that useful. I'm not going to use it very often. I use this way more often than you would have thought. Um, I do make a lot of tacos, but I didn't usually feel have a need to stand them up. But I have found, now that I have this, that I do stand them up. I set this on the griddle and let the shells warm up in it, and they get that shape, and they're warm. And then I can fill them right there on the grill, which is kind of nice. In fact, I love this thing so much, I went at, went back and bought two. Okay. Another thing that fits in this category, this is a big category, is going to be the warming tray. So the warming tray is one of their newer accessories. This is one of those things that, you know, you don't have to have it. It's not necessary. But it really is nice to have, to have this tray that you can stretch out and put at the length of your griddle and keep, like, buns warm or just as you're cooking things in batches, you can uh, move one batch up here to keep it warm without it sitting on the direct heat. So I do use that accessory quite a bit as well. So another one that's nice to have is going to be uh, the egg rings. Okay, They have a couple different versions of the egg rings out there. They have this version, which is newer. You can do up to six at a time. They also have the kit that has the smaller version in it like this. They even have an older kit that has a metal version of this. I have that one as well. Um, I wouldn't get the metal ones. These are way better. Um, if you are making quite a bit at one time, this is not a bad investment. The only problem with this is everything has to cook at the same time. Because if you put it all in there, when you pull it up, 
to flip it, you, you're pulling everything up. So, you know, if you're cooking large batches of eggs all at one time, that's great. And, you know, and it makes it a little bit easier because you're not having to handle a whole bunch of these little ones. But if you're just making a few things or you're making things in batches, a set like this is really nice to have. OK, so you could get the breakfast kit comes with this or you can get this uh, this attachment here. OK, again, not necessary. You could just crack an egg and put it on the griddle and let it cook. But if you want it perfectly round and you want it to sit on a sandwich in a certain way or whatever, these are nice to have. OK. One of the other accessories that, again, you don't need it because you could get your own cutting board and you could set the cutting board on the side shelf or something. Um, it's not so it's not a necessary accessory, but I really love this because the Blackstone cutting board has these little feet on it, which allows it to sit directly on the griddle. And sometimes when you're cooking like chicken or steak or fajitas or something and you're cooking it and you want to cut it real quick. I could pick it up off the heat and set it on here on the griddle, chop it up, and then just slide it right back on the griddle. Okay. It's really come in handy a lot. I do use it quite a bit. Not something you have to have, but it's nice to have if you find yourself cooking a lot of that kind of food. Okay. Um, there's a couple other things that are kind of teetering in the really good to have and the little bit more niche, not so helpful things. Okay. So, um, an example of what I'm talking about is going to be, I would say probably something like this. So this is a kit that came with these magnetic hooks that you can attach to your griddle. And then this hangs on the edge of your griddle for you to put like a scraper or a spatula sitting up off the heat. Um, I would put this in about the same category as this. You know, it just keeps the spatulas, gives them a place to have a home to sit. Um, depending on what your needs are, maybe you want it to sit up off the griddle a little bit. Maybe you want to hang it from the griddle. Maybe you want to set it on the shelf and you want one of these. None of that is necessary. In fact, most of the time, even though I have these things, I just leave the spatula sitting directly on the griddle. So it's not that you need any of them. If you're working with a large area on your griddle and you want that space that the spatula would take up, it's nice to have it. So I switch back and forth between all of these depending on my needs. Sometimes I need the shelf space, so I don't use this. But sometimes uh, I don't need the shelf space, so I can use that. Or sometimes I want the uh, scraper to be right there available because I'm doing something with a lot of sauces. And so instead I'll have this on there and so I can keep my scraper there. Okay. So lots of different reasons to have them. None of them are necessary. You could do just as much without them, okay? Uh, same thing goes with like these. Um, these are really nice to have for cleanliness because you can put them in your drip tray and it makes it much, much easier to clean. But I'm gonna tell you, they're not perfect. Your drip tray, your grease tray, grease trap back there is still gonna get grease in it. So you're still gonna have to clean it. So, it's, it's nice because it makes it so I could pick up the food bits and stuff, and most of those are in here, and I could just throw them away and then clean the grease out of it, but it doesn't fix the problem completely. So if you're, don't, if you're one who doesn't mind cleaning that out anyway, don't invest in these. There's no point, right? All right. I guess the uh, last one in this category that I would think of would be the food thermometer, the Blackstone's thermometer. This is a newer one. Uh, one of the nice things about this is it is a dual function thermometer where it does have a meat probe that comes out and you can position it. And it also has an infrared probe or infrared light so that you can turn it on and I can probe some meat and it will tell me the temperature and it's got a nice bright display here. Or I could just point the infrared thing at a surface and it will tell me the temperature of that surface. Okay, so you can get real quick temperature of your griddle, if you need it at a certain point, you can use this to check the temperature of your steaks or oil or anything like that. Okay. Again, not necessary. In fact, I just got this and for the longest time I didn't use one for a couple years now. I haven't used one. And so it's nice, but it's not something you have to have. All right. The last category. Oh, I forgot about the knife. 
the knife kind of fits in one of those. If you need a knife, get a knife. If you don't need the knife, don't bother. You know, it's a nice knife. One of the reasons I did get this is because I wanted a knife that I could keep out here for cutting things on the Blackstone. And I didn't want to bring my nicer knives out from the kitchen. So I bought this. This one stays out here with the Blackstone, and I could cut on the Blackstone. That's why I got that. All right, so the last category is what I consider accessories that no one really needs. They're kind of fun. They serve a specific purpose. And in a lot of ways, they work. But in some ways, they're not all that useful. Okay, so it's one of those, if you, if you feel like you just want to play a little bit, have some fun, and maybe try something out, they're fun to get. You can a lot of time find these on sale. Um, but these are like the bottom of the rung. Like if you're looking to buy accessories, I would make these the last accessories you buy. Okay. Probably the most popular of those is going to be the pancake kit. Okay. This thing is great. Fill it with pancake batter, squeeze it, squirts pancake batter onto the thing in nice even little amounts. But you could just as easily use a spoon. Just as easily use a bowl the way you would do traditional pancakes. Totally unnecessary. Totally, um, you know, not needed. But it's fun. It's just another thing that you could do to play around. Gives you a little bit more control over the pancake batter. Okay? I would say this would be the next one in that category. Because this set is only for people who need... A transportation device to be able to take food and stuff from maybe in the house or from the camper out to your Blackstone. Okay, so this set comes with a whole bunch of smaller bins inside. Okay, and so these smaller bins you can use for prep, put vegetables in them, put uh, accessories in them, use them to carry out. The top doubles as a tray, so it's nice. Okay, but Unless you have a major need for it, don't bother, okay? The next one, which is probably one of my least favorite, I was one really excited about this when I got it. And now I'm kind of like, eh, I almost never use it. And I'll tell you why. This is the butter roll, okay? So you put butter in here, and you roll your pieces of bread over it, and it evenly coats the bread for you to toast. And this just sits on the Blackstone and melts the butter for you, okay? It's nice. It works. It serves its purpose. There's nothing wrong with it, but it takes almost an entire stick of butter, if not more, to be able to hit the wheel. Okay, so you're using a lot of butter. And really, this is for if you're buttering enough toast to make like a grilled cheese for every member of a baseball team, then yeah, this is worth getting. But if you're just at home making grilled cheese sandwiches with your family or throwing some hamburger buns on the grill, you're never going to use it because you're not going to want to melt an entire stick of butter and you're not going to want to go through the effort to use that when you could just as easily rub some butter on the griddle and just throw your thing down. Okay, so I almost never use that one. And probably my least favorite accessory and the one that I think is the most worthless <laughs> is going to be this pancake decorating kit, which comes with a huge number of squirt bottles, all different colors. So you could color your pancake batter. Frankly, all the squirt bottles, I think it came with like six or eight squirt bottles. They're in the way. I have them stashed in the house in the back of a cabinet because they're just in the way. Cause I, how often am I going to make colored pancakes? Right. And then you got these fun little shapes, which my kids do enjoy. But again, how often do I use this? Not very. And they're they're not that great. Like when they come out, yes, they look like this. But honestly, this doesn't look like much. It kind of looks like a blob with an eye in it. So it's not that great of a shape anyway. And so on occasion, like you're talking, I've maybe used this kit twice in total. Okay. Um, I do use this. But it's... I got it as a gift, so I didn't even buy this. It's one of those kits that I just wouldn't buy, okay? But if you want it, if you're into that kind of thing, maybe you're more into decorating pancakes and stuff, then there you go. 
So that's just kind of a basic rundown of the accessories that are available to you. Like I said, people ask me which ones they should get. That's that first category, spatula, scraper, dome, squirt bottles. Then what should I get beyond that if I wanted to go big and get some other stuff? Burger presses, warming rack, taco kit, egg rings, you know, those kinds of things. And I would, again, buy those as I need them. And then the final category of unless you just have a specific need for this thing, don't waste your money, are things like the pancake batter kit, the butter roller, these uh, tubs with all the excess, with all the uh, storage and stuff, and especially the pancake decorating kit. Okay, so there's a lot of accessories out there. Go explore, look at them. It's a lot of fun to collect them and to get a bunch of stuff. But hopefully this will help you think about what you're getting and get you started. So until next time, thanks for watching.